Hello again, friends, and welcome to another edition of If This Car Could Talk. This week, we're bringing you another AMX. Whenever we do, these videos always get a lot of views, so obviously you guys really enjoy these cars. There's no doubt that in the past, we featured some stunners. All are linked below if you missed them the first time around, or if you'd like to watch them again. This week's car is not your typical AMX, but the actual AMX awarded to Playboy Magazine's 1968 Playmate of the Year. Carefully restored by current owner Mark Melvin and a core group of knowledgeable and enthusiastic American Motors aficionados over the course of several years, even if this AMX wasn't so historically significant, it'd still be one of the top examples in the country. We examined the car closely during our photo shoot and let me tell you, every nut, bolt and fastener is finished correctly and everything else is painstakingly detailed to impress even the fussiest car show judge. When you see the condition the car was found in, it's even more astounding that this restored two-seater muscle car started as a project that few would commit to seeing through. Well, we'll let Mark fill us in on the whole story from its humble beginnings to current day. Now, let's go for a ride. Uh, my name's Mark Melvin. I live in Bullhead City, Arizona. Today the uh, subject is a 1968 American Motors AMX that I've owned for 13 years now. The, the story of how I came to own the pink AMX starts with uh, another AMX that I bought in 1977. It's my first car. I still have it. It's a 1969 AMX. Uh, when I bought the car, I, I didn't even know that this pink Playmate car even existed, you know, that Playboy had given an AMX to their Playmate of the Year. So little did I know that someday I would come to own that car. So uh, the way that happened was in 2010, I got an email one day from a guy who sells AMC parts. His name's uh, Doug Galvin from Northern California. So Doug says, hey, just to give you a heads up that this uh, Playmate AMX is for sale in the Los Angeles area. And it, kind of at the time, the car was kind of a, the holy grail. I, I looked at it that way. The holy grail of cars is kind of mythical. It's like everybody had heard about the Playmate AMX, but nobody knew where it existed. Nobody had ever seen the thing. So all of a sudden, here it is for sale. Well, uh, it just happened to be for sale near where I work down in Westwood. So uh, I said to myself, if it was meant possibly for me to own this car, that it would still be there the following day after I got off work. So the next day I got off work, went down there to a used car lot in Venice Beach off of Lincoln Avenue. And uh, to check it out, I went in there and, and checked the car out. Uh, the car was black, you know, but there was pink paint peeking out from everywhere, you know, uh, in the inch compartment, the under the seats, the, the seats were ripped up real bad, the headliner, the trunk. It was dirty and greasy everywhere, but there was pink paint underneath all of that. It's like, man, it would be really hard to fake this. So, uh, you know, plus there was the paperwork there. They had the, the Playmate's name on there. It was the, the original DMV paperwork with the blue California seal, st uh, state seal on the paperwork. It's like, man, this looks pretty good. It'd be really hard to fake all of this. So I took a chance and I went ahead and uh, placed, placed a deposit on it to uh, secure it. That was a Wednesday, I believe. I uh, came back on Saturday to uh, finish paying it off and transport the car home. So immediately I put the car, uh, I had a friend who had a, a hangar at the local airport. So, you know, I'd used about all my savings at the time. I spent 13000 to buy the car. So I had no money to start a restoration, so I needed, I needed to store the car. So a, a friend at the airport uh, let me put it in his hangar. For a couple of years and then finally uh 2012 is when we we started restoring restoring the car uh, we started it over at uh, a member's house in the club uh, john siciliano we uh i trailered the car over there and about five or six club members showed up that day and mm -hmm. we took it about 80 percent apart that first day we put all the parts in big plastic bucket bins and uh, at the end of the day, I took all the parts down to the local uh, public storage. Uh, 
And then from there, and John's house is about an hour from where I lived. So from that, from that day on, for the next three years, almost every weekend, either a Saturday or a Sunday, one of the two days, I drove an hour all the way over there to John's house to uh, help work on the car and then drive, drive an hour all the way back home. And uh, so after about a year of doing this, and the car was progressing, but slowly, uh, one of the, the second guy that was involved in all this, Tyler, Alan Tyler, <laughs> But uh, Alan says, hey, you know, and he, he only lived about 10 miles away from John. He says, hey, you know, if we move this car over to my house, I can work on it and it, it'll get done quicker. So we did that. We moved the car to, to Alan's house and every day he got home from work, he was just working on the car by himself. And Alan is a fantastic mechanic. Every weekend when I came over to work on the car, it was it had advanced more and more. And finally, three years later, I mean, it's we had finished the car. All right. Say hello to Mark Melvin. Yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> He's gonna take us for take me for a quickie little cruise. Ooh. Anyway, as I was saying, we are in the '68 AMX Playboy Pink Car, the original Playboy gift to the Playmate of the Year in 1968, which you guys will hear more about. You restored this, right, Mark? Yeah. How long ago? Uh, we started 2012 and we finished, it took three years. We finished in 2015. And uh, right as we finished it, somehow Jay Leno and his, uh, his uh, people heard about it. And so within literally weeks, uh, the car was at Jay Leno's garage for a video shoot. It happened pretty fast. It is just so cool. So far as we know, the only pink Playmate car that's still around. That's what you were saying? Yeah, as far as know I know, I, I've searched all over the internet and I have not seen hide or hair of any other one of the, uh, not not any Playmate car, regardless of the color or, or you know, model. There's wow. just none of them out there. I, I've seen a reference to possibly a pink uh, Pantera that used to be pink. The owner was told that a playmate used to own it, but he had no documentation, he had no proof. Yeah. I saw pictures of that one. <laughs> and there was um, a story that I had read about the 64 Mustang, how it had been found in the front yard in Texas, and then uh, later on I read, well, that was actually a fake story, so uh, who knows. Yeah. <laughs> So this, this car is documented. When I bought it, uh, the Playmate's name was still on the DMV paperwork. The original paperwork, you know, not a photocopy or anything. Yeah. It had the blue uh, California DMV seal on there. So the, the VIN number of the vehicle is in three places all over it. So, And then right after I bought it, one of my friends in the club said, Oh, you know, they made several pink AMXs. I'm like, oh, no, don't, <laughs> don't tell me I bought one of the fake ones. But fortunately, I didn't. This is it. The first concourse car show I got the car into was um, the Pacific Palisades car show. And so they want to know what's the what's the car's history in car shows. And I said, well, it was on Jay Leno's garage. <laughs> so, bam, okay, sure, you're in. So once, once I got that first car show under the belt, then the rest were pff, no problem. So um, I've taken it to concourse shows uh, in Santa Fe, New Mexico. It's been to the AMO National shows in uh, Cleveland, in Rockford, Illinois, uh, Las Vegas, all over Southern California. So the, the car's gotten around. It has a pretty good history now, so, but I, it's actually to the point where actually, at least on the West Coast, there's almost, there's almost no shows it's, it hasn't been to. So kind of looking now to take it to, I'm looking for new shows. So when I bought the car, uh, I wanted to meet her and I, and I was given her phone number and her address. So one morning I get an email and saying, hey, I don't know if you heard or not, but the, the playmate just shot her husband. She's in jail. I'm like, you're kidding me. How do I contact her now? She's in jail. You can't just, just go down there willy-nilly and talk to her. So this is not good. 
She went to uh, her court date and they sentenced her to nine years in prison. She spent eight years in prison until uh, releasing her on good behavior. So during that eight years that she was in prison, though, was when we were doing the restoration. And then the restoration took three years. So for the next five years, I was taking it to car shows. Well, finally, they released her to a halfway house close to where I lived. So uh, on the weekends, either a Saturday or a Sunday, I was allowed to come over for six hours. And I could take her out to lunch or we could go to the movies or, or just do whatever. The history of Playboy, Playboy going back a little bit just to explain. Uh, Playboy started in 1953. They decided, hey, let's do a Playmate of the Year. <laughs> so that started. Then five years later in 1964, then they decided, hey, well, let's give that same Playmate of the Year. Let's give her a car as our grand prize. The first year was a, a pink 64 Mustang. Second year was a 65 uh, Sunbeam Tiger, which is a little British sports car with a V8 engine. Um, the third year was a 66 Charger. Uh, the fourth year was a 67 Barracuda. These cars are all pink. Uh, the fifth year was a 1968 AMX, uh, which is uh, the one I own. Uh, they had some other pink cars after that. Uh, they had a pink Pantera. They had a pink Mercedes-Benz. They had a pink Porsche, a pink Mercury Capri. But after 12 years, uh, Playboy stopped the tradition of the pink cars. They, they continued to give cars to the Playmate of the Year. But they stopped with the pink color because uh, the color drew too much attention to the Playmates. They would get pulled over by the police for an autograph or guys would follow them home. So... Uh, there's actually only 11 pink Playmate cars. I have number five. Uh, people have noticed uh, differences in two different pictures of the pink AMX. Mm -hmm. That in one picture, the car has Magnum 500 wheels. In the other picture, that car has hubcaps. So the difference between the two pictures is that uh, while her car was still at the factory being prepared, uh, Playboy needed a, a photo of the car to... Uh, go into the magazine they needed to print the magazine so what they did was they grabbed a car off of the local dealership lot in los angeles called dick allen motors they had the car painted pink for the day uh, went down to the beach and they did the photo shot photo shoot with victoria that ended up in the playboy magazine and then by the end of the day uh it came back to the dealership lot and the pink paint was washed off uh, that story was told to me by Dennis Allen, the son of the owner of the dealership lot. Uh, eventually, when the pink AMX at the factory was finished, it was transported out to the West Coast. There was a presentation at Hugh Hefner's West L.A. office. Uh, Victoria was up in Hugh Hefner's office uh, talking to him while her car was downstairs on the street being prepared for the photo shoot. When it was uh, when the photographer was ready, they called up to the office. Hugh Hefner says, "Victoria, you got to come down to uh, where the car is. They're going to give you something." So uh, she went down there, and the pictures were taken. Uh, everything was there. Everything was original. It was just dirty and greasy and beat up and bent and broken. So it was it was really easily fixable. It just took a lot of time. Took a lot of money. <laughs> we uh, sent the engine out to the repair shop. And they told us that the engine had been uh, bored out. Uh, it had pistons in it that were stamped 30 over. So the engine had been rebuilt once. That was the evidence. So I'm thinking, why? And so my guess is that because of all the oil, the engine compartment was coated in oil. I'm thinking probably the engine was leaking oil. The engine ran dry and burned up the motor, so they had to rebuild it. But uh, everything just went together. Just perfectly, you know, everything in that car works. The uh, designer of the AMX was a gentleman named uh, Richard Teak, who worked, who worked for American Motors. So at the Pacific Palisades uh, Concourse Show, probably, well, that's where I won maybe the best award that the car's ever won. I was, uh, I had the car parked and cleaned up and we're waiting for the judges to come by. Uh, Gentleman walks up to me and he says, oh, hi, how's it going, Mark? How are you doing? Well, I'm like, who's this guy? I, who are you? Excuse me. And he says, well, I'm, I'm Jeff Teague. And I realized, oh, yes, Jeff Teague, his dad, his dad is Richard Teague, the guy who designed the car. Well, yeah. Jeff Teague was there that day uh, to be a judge for the car show. So that's, that's how he happened to come by. 
So at one o'clock I looked, oh, here's a piece of paper, that's uh, good. Uh, so they write a number on the piece of paper according to what place you win. Well, there's a number one. I got first place, great. So uh, the winners, just first place only, they, would, they had you drive across the stage so they could video your car and the presentation up to, onto a big like diamond vision screen behind the stage so that everybody way in the back can see you. So I drove the car onto the stage and the, the MC is talking about the car and he hands the microphone to the second guy. I'm like, well, who's that? And I realized, oh, that's Jeff Teague. The girl who came over and awarded the trophy to me was actually uh, Jeff's daughter. Uh, so that was, that was kind of cool. The granddaughter of the guy who designed the car gave me the trophy. It's fun, you know, the attention it gets. Going to car shows, it's, it's interesting noticing the different reactions. So thanks Mark and Victoria for spending some time with us recently to bring our subscribers and viewers an incredibly rare and historic first year AMX. We truly enjoyed hearing all the behind the scenes stories about Victoria, how you got the car, the car's arduous journey from Junker to Jewel, and the story of the camaraderie shared between friends to complete the car to the level we see today. Mark shows the car at many different gatherings to share the story, and that's certainly one you'll never see at your local car show or cruise night. Uh, tell us in the comments what you guys think about this pink, one-of-a-kind American Motors product. Next week, we continue to bring you the best and most interesting cars we can find. A great car we recently discovered is a stunning 1958 Edsel Pacer convertible, belonging to a longtime vintage car enthusiast from the Phoenix area. After meeting Bob Ray and going through old photo albums of some of his previous cars, it's obvious Bob loves old cars, the history they represent, and most importantly, the friendships made over a lifetime is what keeps him going at nearly 90 years old. He's the real deal. You don't want to miss this one, so we'll see you next week. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and be careful out there.